Deanne, I think you, oh. oh yeah, there you go. There we go. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, Texas. Thank you for joining us today. You are joining our second event with the Texas Broadband Development Office and HRNA. And I'm from ILSR. It's a community guide to the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan. Next slide, Jordan. Uh, real quickly, we're going to hear a message from the Texas Broadband Development Office and Cindy Fisher. Then we'll quickly go into a poll. And during the poll, because we want you to take the poll, we need peak engagement with the poll today, please. We want you to go ahead and do virtual introductions via chat. Please share your uh, first name, last name, and the organization you represent. And then after the poll ends, we'll start our deep dive. Because today is a 90-day module, you will be getting a 10-minute break. We hope that y'all take that stretch um, and take care of yourself, get some water. After that, we have an interactive breakout room. We'll be asking you to join. And then we'll end with a with another um with another part of a segment where we're going to talk more and deeply about the engagement and participation um, with the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan. And then we'll end with a QA session today. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Cindy for her brief remarks. Please pay attention to the poll as she's speaking and please engage with it as much as you can. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Deanne. Um, hello, everyone. If you haven't met me before, my name is Cindy Fisher. I am the Digital Opportunity Program Supervisor here at the Texas Broadband Development Office. And I am absolutely thrilled to be um, able to uh, offer these series of webinars in partnership with ILSR and HRNA Advisors. A lot of that is due to the fact that we know that the, this type of technical assistance and engagement is what you all have been asking of the broadband office. And so it is really important for our office to let you know that we hear you and we wanna give you the everything, all the tools that you need to be able to prepare yourselves, your communities, your organizations for potential funding that we'll be receiving um, due to the Digital Equity Act of 2021. I'm gonna hand it back over to Deanne because I know we have a lot to discuss today, but I'm so happy and thrilled that you're here. And I look forward to um, hearing more of what your comments are on the Texas, Texas Digital Opportunity Plan. Wow, that was a perfect 30 second introduction. <laughs> got, to, got to time it. Okay, Jordan, next slide. Today we will be, uh, today's community guide to the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan is an opportunity to discuss the text, the TDOP, we're going to use the word TDOP for the rest. It is um, a roadmap for how the uh, Texas state of Texas will uh, be expanding the use of reliable and affordable broadband device deployment programs, digital skills, and cybersecurity awareness for all Texans. Next slide. We'll also be going into an overview of TDOF's objectives and, um, and the scope. Uh, we'll get into that in much more other breakout slides. Why was the why was the TDOP created? It was created by the Broadband Development Office that I'll refer to now as the BDO. We would like to um, share with you that it, this plan is the first of its kind. It's exciting. It's a big deal. Uh, we should all be um, celebrating that. And as those of you who are on the call that have been a part of any working groups or survey distribution or public comments so far, uh, should also be, um, you know, appreciating yourself for making this happen. Uh, remind yourself that this addresses everything Texas needs need, to, need to, to be able to like bridge the digital divide, do the digital inclusion work and get us to our digital opportunity goals. Uh, the TDOP is not about building um, infrastructure, but it is about everything else. And if you want to know more information about infrastructure, please refer to the Texas Broadband Development Office. They've got landing pages that go deep on BEAD and other issues as it relates to expanding broadband and adoption in the state of Texas. Lastly, the most exciting part about this for me, and I know for others on the call, the TDOP will inform a grant making strategy for implementation. So there are lots of questions and answers that we'll be trying to get to um, in later modules about what that looks like or what it could look like, because that's in, still in process. But I know that a lot of local organizations and cities and counties would like to know more about the grant making strategy and what the plan and the program for that is. Also, don't forget the TDOP is a draft, which is why your engagement and your participation with the TDOP is so important and critical to our success right now in this moment between now and January 5th. It is in a draft and the 
comments that will come from you and organizations and other Texans will inform our final plan. So please take the time to go through your favorite parts of the plan or all parts of the plan as you can and make sure that you understand that your comment, your participation and how you activate the community to engage with the TDOP will inform the final plan. Next slide. The key components of the TDOP will be um, will be included in this presentation. This is a, the framework for the first three to five years is in the digital inclusion work of the state. It also includes a needs assessment. The needs assessment was informed by community uh, members through surveys and conversations and identifies needs and barriers to universal broadband adoption and use for cover populations. We'll get into cover populations uh, more at a, in a later module, but you should definitely Google or search for Digital Equity Act and cover populations and refer to the national landing page or information posted on the Texas Broadband Office as it relates to cover populations. But if you're on this call today, I'm going to guess that you're most likely working with the most vulnerable in our community, which also uh, would be defined as a cover populations. If you're a community member and you were not involved with the surveys or the conversations up until today, please engage with the TDOP public comment period because you can still include your comments um, now through that process. Next slide. Other key components of the TDOP is an asset inventory that has a crowdsourced information on who is working in Texas to advance digital inclusion opportunities. So if you don't know uh, who those stakeholders are that we'll refer to them today or digital inclusion leaders or people who don't identify as digital inclusion leaders, you definitely want to refer to the asset inventory. If, you, I, if you're getting into digital inclusion work or you don't identify as digital inclusion practitioner, but you're an organization or leader that understands that's a common barrier for success, we ask you again to engage with the public comment. You're gonna hear me like a broken record today until we got this muscle memory. Uh, please engage with the uh, TDOT because we'd like to know more about the work that you're doing um, around this issue. It's also a living database. The BDO will continue to expand on that as they hear from you. Also take note that this PowerPoint presentation today will, will be sent out as a meeting uh, meeting recap material. So I won't be going um, over every single word because some of these slides are word, um, word heavy, but I have included the chapters and the page numbers to different parts of the TDOP that we'll refer to today. So if you wanna know more about implementation strategies, please refer to those chapters and any key terms that come up today that you might not understand, slide four of the TDOP deck that's available online has all those key terms ready for you that you can print out and refer to to better understand different elements of the TDOP. Next, next slide, please. Um, I'm excited to be joined by other members of my team today. I'm going to let them introduce themselves as they join in. Uh, these are members of the Community Broadband Networks Initiative uh, at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. I will let Sean jump in here. He is going to go over digital divide, digital inclusion, and di digital opportunity with y'all today. Thank you, Deanne. Can everyone hear me? Deanne, thumbs up. I can see you, but no one else. Terrific, terrific. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I am the Associate Director for Communications at the ILS at ILSR's Community Broadband Networks Initiative. I almost always sprain my tongue introducing myself. I'm not a Texas resident. I'm based in Massachusetts, uh, but I do have three siblings and my son, uh, re residents of the state of Texas in Austin, actually. So Texas is very near and dear to my heart, and I'm a huge fan of Bucky's, as my team knows well. Um, I'd like to start by saying a few words about words. The words are equity and opportunity, because it's important to know that the federal legislation that will be funding much, if not all of the state's efforts to eliminate barriers to broadband adoption is actually called the Digital Equity Act. The Texas plan, as Deanne referred to earlier, of course, is the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan, TDOP. Now, whatever word you use, the plan is required by Congress in order for states to unlock its portion of the Federal Digital Equity Act funds. So, for, But for our purposes here today, really the words can be used interchangeably. But frankly, I really like the word Texas uses. 
opportunity, because that's exactly what is before us today, an opportunity to ensure that every Texas resident can take advantage of what high-speed internet offers, whether it's accessing government services, uh, the expansion of employment opportunities, entrepreneurial activity, distance learning, smart home features, or to unlock the tremendous benefits, uh, the tremendous healthcare cost savings and life enhancing applications of telehealth. Now, the, 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 the term the digital, digital divide gets used a lot. And it's really just meant to describe the divide between those who have access to high quality internet service and the skills to use it and those who do not. Now, as Deanne referred to earlier, of course, there are infrastructure challenges, ensuring that the physical networks are in place to support high quality connections. But that's not what the Digital Equity Act focuses on or what TDOP is primarily focused on. The infrastructure stuff, that's what the BEAD program focuses on. Now, digital equity is a term that many broadband for all advocates use to describe basically getting to a place where everyone is in a position to take advantage of internet connectivity. And it's so it's not as easy as build it and they will come, meaning the infrastructure. Um, there's other challenges associated with broadband adoption. Chief among them is affordability. We like to say in this space that if it's not affordable, it's not accessible. There's other challenges, of course, associated um, with broadband adoption. Lots of households do not have the devices uh, they need, laptops, desktops, tablets, and the like. And then there are many people who need digital skills training, of course. I mean, people do not come out of the womb knowing how to use internet connected devices. So digital skills training is a vital piece of this effort. And then, of course, lots of folks are rightly concerned about things like cybersecurity. So the TDOP is really meant to address all of these challenges, aside from infrastructure. The slide that you're looking at now gives you a sense of the affordability challenge just in Harris County. One important part of the bipartisan infrastructure law that is what is fueling all of this work in terms of funding and programs, et cetera, was the establishment of the Affordable Connectivity Program, or ACP. And so this map that you see here is just to show in Harris County, and, and it's a similar story across Texas and other states, and this map shows the enrollment rates of eligible households in Harris County. Now, the bright orange and light orange are areas where there are very low enrollment rates in the affordable connectivity program. So there's lots of work to be done in terms of enrolling more eligible households in that vital program. But Harris County is not alone. So as I said, a big part of the digital opportunity plan is to zero in on ways to increase ACP enrollment for eligible households and families as well as other ways to tackle the affordability challenge. Now, this next slide shows another map of Harrison County, but this is a map, a heat map essentially of what level of internet service is available in, in um, Harris County. Now, maps like this exist for every county uh, in every state in the United States. But let me just quickly say a word about the FCC maps. They're not exactly as accurate as we'd like at a granular level because these maps reflect the levels of service that ISPs advertise. But as you know, there's what is advertised and then there's what people are actually getting. So another aspect of this work is to really to tap in to local knowledge to get a more accurate picture of what's available and why people may or may not be getting service. This is part of digital inclusion work, which you can think of as the pathway to get to the goal of ensuring that everyone has equal opportunity to access high quality internet service. 
And I would say that those who know best about why different subsets of the population, covered populations in particular, do not have access are the people in these communities. And this is really at the heart of TDOP and why it's so important to tap into those local sources of knowledge to get a crystal clear picture of the digital landscape so that the state can really target these investments for what is truly a once in a generation opportunity to vastly improve the quality of life of Texas residents and unlock untapped economic potential. So I'm gonna be a broken record with, with my colleague, Deanne. This is why it is so important to engage this plan and to offer up quality comments because the folks who know this problem or these challenges the best are the ones who are are the ones who are closest to it. Now, this la this next slide here um, can serve really as a reminder that the challenge before us is the digital divide. The work, what we refer to as digital inclusion, because the work is really including especially those on the wrong side of the digital divide to get to a place where we can say everyone has digital opportunity. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it back to my colleague, Deanne, and I uh, appreciate you uh, listening for these past few moments. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. And as a reminder, you will be getting a copy of these slides and we've included um, links to different parts so you'll be able to click on the ACP dashboard and. Uh, it'll take you there and you'll be able to click around and look at everything we state in zip code. Um, also want to remind you that the poll is still up. Um, and if you are joining us just now and you're coming in the presentation, please drop your first name, your last name and the organization if, uh, that you belong to, if you do belong to one. And please take a moment to take the poll as we're talking today. Um, and as a reminder, we will be providing a 10 minute break in a little bit. Next slide, please. So one of the most exciting parts about uh, the the T dot that I really like to uh, you know dive into, and I'm, I've got it open all the time. That's the, the geek I am on this on this today, uh, going forward is the what they call the what we call the pivotal features of the T dot, like uh, the things that we say like you know this is the first of its kind. It hasn't been um, done before. Is those are the features that we want you all to highlight or take a look at when you get into uh, different parts of the plan. You know, print them out and share them with your team. Uh, some of the pivotal features are um, also like part of the goals that lots of us that work on this issue or want to work on this issue have asked for. Uh, so one of the pivotal features that I really like about the TDOP is that it has an explanation of glossary. The glossary clearly defines the terms in the TDOP. Uh, one of the biggest challenges for uh, organizations and individuals that really care about this issue, that want to work on this issue, is this fear of thinking that you have to be somebody that does work in technology. Um, I will share with you that I, when people ask me what I do, I will say I work in technology because I do, even though the truth is like, I don't, right? Like I don't work in technology. I don't build computers. You know, I'm not doing anything with software or hardware. But is that fear of people uh, thinking that they need to understand a lot of the technical jargon in order to be an advocate on this issue? And the truth is, a matter of fact, the part of it is that the overwhelming majority that are working on digital inclusion and uh, trying to end the digital divide are people who are working around food insecurity, underhoused populations, incarcerated individuals, um, those are people that don't first identify as a, you know, as a digital inclusion organization. But as I mentioned before, uh, not having access to the internet or digital skills or access to a high quality device is the common barrier that that organization shares with the issue. So the glossary is an excellent way to familiarize yourself with some of the terms that um, are can be jargony and could end up in some RFPs that you might not understand. So it's a really nice tool that people like us have asked for in the past and it's included in the TDOP and you can print that out. 
when we say cover populations, as I mentioned earlier, you could Google or search for that yourself, but the identification of NTA's cover populations, are, they're clearly defined in the TDOP. So if you're not sure yet, if you're an organization uh, that should be keeping an eye on this work or should be engaging um, so deeply with the TDOP, you're going to find out more by referring to those sections because it's clearly defined. And I'm going to guess that a lot of you that are on this call today definitely are working with underserved populations. Uh, there are statistics that are of the covered populations that are covered in Texas. There are eight covered populations that are clearly defined. We are not going to share uh, the, the numbers in this presentation today, but I what I will say is one of the reasons why you should really get in there is that the, if you're wondering uh, what are the, what is the what are the findings of the covered populations and what those populations are in Texas, what those numbers are, you can find those numbers really easily in the TDOP and that could help you shape the solutions or um, how you're identifying the problems and possibly um, submitting public comment. There are um, regional focus areas. So if you're coming in today from Bear County, you would be definitely in the Alamo region. Uh, if you're not sure what region you are, you can refer to the TDOP to find out like where your county or where your municipality is located. So there are findings and highlights throughout the TDOP where you can look at the more granular information and findings of your region and how it relates to your work. Uh, and the percentages are available there. This will help your region or your area of the state pivot your strategies and your tactics around the digital divide and digital inclusion if, if you need to, or if you, you, know, you think you might be um, focused on an area of your region um, that might be, um, be served well or underserved. Um, sometimes it could be the case. And then there are um, also the one of the highlights that we mentioned earlier in the call is the creation of the Texas Broadband Office. You know, why was it established? Why was it formed? What is its long? Why are we going to have long term, you know, statewide plan? And what is the Texas Broadband Development Office do? We're lucky to have a, t um, a broadband development office it is um, newly established. And we gave them a shout out the other day for our predictions of a broadband office doing well in the United States. So we really encourage you to get to know the broadband office well. Next slide. Why we need you to in, uh, engage with the TDOP is it will be used to create our um, our grant grant making plan. Like the the grant making plan, how will you apply? What will be the guidelines? You know, what are the qualified uh, solutions? What are the granting mechanisms? You know. Um, you know, what will be the, will there be an online process, a print process? I'm making these up as I go along. And that's because we need your public comment, your organization or um, your leadership's involvement in the public comment. I've also uh, mentioned, I've gotten a question at the last event that um, organizations wanted to know if the work that they were doing would be a, a part of those grant making plans. If you see something in the TV, now in its current version that does not feel like the work that you're doing is well represented, finding the section that you would like to offer a public comment is where I would encourage you to, um, to offer or add value to the TDOP of where you think the work that you're doing could be impactful to help us reaching um, our digital opportunity goals. And then what are those goals? We're going to get in, in deeper into those goals in a moment, but the goals and the KPIs are also included. Um, the information is outlined, and then there's some great graphics that you can quickly refer to them. We have to have some goals, and the TDOP represents our shared goals as a state. Whether you're a rural community or you're an urban community, these are the goals that we, as the state of Texas, collectively share. But how will we know that we are tracking towards success? Well, the key performance indicators that the that the TDOP ha um, has outlined in the plan will help us learn where we need to, um, how we need to measure our success and how we can track that success and how we can document that, which is also why there will be a living plan that will get updated um, as we go along. And the goal is to make sure every Texan is connected and whatever we have to do to do that. So I highly encourage you to check out the goals and KPIs and really see what resonates with the work you're doing, um, the work that's underway or the work that needs to be planned. And then there's re information about the regional working groups. If you're not um, part of one yet, uh, there's more information about the working groups at the Texas Broadband Development Office. Uh, 
see if uh, if there are already stakeholder representation stakeholder representation of the work you're doing, and if there's not, and you're working with a covered population, there's ways that you can um, that you can reach out to the broadband office to find out more about the working group's information. But the survey information data that's been done up th uh, thus far in the survey is already included, so uh, definitely check it out. The truth is, the state of Texas is large. We're always referring to how large the state of Texas is, which is why we kind of giggle when somebody says they're coming to. Austin and they want to go visit a friend of ours in San Antonio, right? Because they think it's just right down the road and it's not. But the amount of surveys that, uh, you know, were collected, you know, um, weren't as many as anybody would want, because if you're someone who does survey work, you you would like to get the most amount of uh, people as possible. But it got us this far, which we're really happy. So there's another reason why we're going to keep banging this drum as to why we need, um, need you all now more than ever to engage with the plan. So I've said a lot. I'm going to turn it over to Chris Mitchell, who's joining us. Chris, you ready? I sure am. All right. Well, you're going in. All right. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Um, am I in control of it? Is someone else in control of it? Sorry. The hazards of joining a minute late. Jordan's going to take control for you. Thank you. Um, so uh, the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan sets out five goals, and we're going to talk a bit about those and the measurements and how we'll know we'll reach them. And along the way, I will be reminding you that we would love for you to comment on this if you have comments. We don't need comments for comments sake. We want to make sure this is a great plan for the state of Texas. And so if you have things to suggest, we hope that you will be doing it. Um, the five goals that um, NTIA has, or I'm sorry, that Texas has set out um, at the direction of NTIA, uh, focus on availability and affordability, uh, device availability, um, and technical support, uh, digital literacy, which we often think of as the skills to make sure that everyone uh, can be well connected, uh, making sure people are online in a secure manner, that they feel safe doing it, and then they actually are safe doing it. And then making sure that people are using this for public resources, where uh, we'll really get a societal benefit from making sure that everyone is online. Um, and so uh, one of the things I love about this, you'll notice, is that the goal is all Texans. Everything starts with all Texans. And uh, I think that is a uh, the, the kind of goal that we can um, that we like to see in every state, frankly. Um, so uh, the, this is uh, the five goals. We're going to go through a number of lists of things, but you'll want to come back to five goals. Uh, and we'll talk about how, how these goals will be measured in the next slide. Uh, so for the next slide, we have, uh, we're have we going to talk about what a key performance indicator is. I'm one of these people, I, I'm not down with the business and the nonprofit speak always. And so I will say probably start saying KPI, but the key things to understand about a key performance indicator is it is a measure that will tell you whether or not you are getting closer to your goal. It's quantifiable, which means that we know we can measure it. We can know that if we have 20% of people doing something today, 30% tomorrow, 40% the year after that, um, that means that we are able to measure something over time. And that's uh, one of the characteristics of a key performance indicator. There are a lot of key performance indicators in this plan to make sure that we know uh, what we're doing. Um, the uh, KPI, uh, the indicators, they relate to one or multiple of the, of the strategies. So we have strategies that we will be covering to get us to the goals, the five goals that we just covered. For these strategies, each one has its own indicator. You see here on page 48, um, this is a uh, the um, uh, readout of the performance indicators. Uh, there's only a few pages of these. I think this is a quite important part of the plan to look at. Uh, you'll see things like they want to increase the percentage of Texans with reliable broadband subscriptions available in their homes. Uh, they have done a baseline study for all of these. And so they have a sense that right now, 68% of Texans uh, households subscribe to the service. And they want that to be 80% by 2030. Do you think that's the right timing? That's something to comment on. Um, now there's three strategies that are listed. And these are the three strategies that will be undertaken by the state in order to reach the goal. Uh, so that's how these key performance indicators work. Um, I think it is worth noting that a lot of the TDOP, this uh, Texas Digital Opportunity Plan, is actually laying out baseline data and laying it out in a way that is very interesting for someone who's worked in this field for 16 years and often not had this kind of data. 
to be able to say, not only do I see a percentage associated with the statistic, but I can compare that with this covered population to the average uh, population group. And uh, that is what a majority of the report is. And so uh, one of the things I would say about this is that you should not be intimidated by the length of this document. It's filled with wonderful information. But things like these KPIs are only on a few pages that you can really focus on. And then you can dip into the baseline data part of the rest of the plan uh, as you go through it. So to give you a, a refresher, this the plan has key performance indicators that are listed here in this table uh, that will tell us whether or not the strategies that the Texas uh, State uh, Broadband Development Office is pursuing, if those strategies are working to achieve their goals. All of these things are open for comment if you think it's appropriate. Uh, and you should feel free to weigh in if it is appropriate and you feel so. Give them you know, a sense that that's appropriate and support it with some evidence. Uh, the next slide, please. Um, so each uh, each opportunity goal um, has multiple KPIs, as I said, um, and so I think I actually sort of went over this from the previous one, um, but uh, as I said, I think these are pages 48, 49, 50, something like that, and you uh, can look through all of these in just a few pages to see how the state plans to measure its progress on its strategies to achieve its goals. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, so in terms of the uh, actual strategies to address the needs, these are the strategies that will be evaluated by the key performance indicators. Um, I wanted to note in getting into this that we are uh, we have this data that examines every single covered population. It compares a variety of survey questions uh, to the average, and it breaks it down by region. And so this is data that we haven't seen before. Uh, it is remarkable uh, in terms of uh, the breadth and the depth of it. And uh, there again, I think if you have a sense that any of it is uh, is incorrect or uh, incorrectly framed, uh, comments would be welcome. Uh, but it is, it is in great depth. Uh, and so uh, the breakdown by region and the comparison to other groups I thought was uh, particularly useful. Now, as we look at these strategies, I'm just going to go back for a second because I know it was five goals, and we have these four strategies to achieve those five goals that will be measured by the key performance indicators that are involved there. Um, and the first uh, first strategy is to partner with and fund partner with and fund these statewide organizations. These might be parts of the state of Texas already. They might be nonprofits. Uh, they could be other entities. Uh, they might be for-profit companies, I presume. Um, the point is that there are a variety of statewide organizations that already exist. The second strategy is to fund local partners. These are more local groups, again, that typically already exist. These are strategies that I think are rooted in the lessons that have been learned from uh, wanting to work with groups that already have the trust of the community who are already rooted in doing this work and making them more effective. The plan discusses that actually in some of the background for uh, partners that they, that they expect uh, to partner with. Uh, the uh, third strategy is to promote internet adoption, and there's a variety of ways that they plan to do that that are outlined with the key performance indicators. And then the fourth strategy is to maintain a living digital opportunity plan, to revisit this document and to make sure it is updated with new data, new information. We have 50 states that are doing similar work. We might be learning things from some of them that will then come back over and feed into this plan. So these are the four strategies that the state has identified. Uh, going uh, statewide with organizations to partner, looking at more locally rooted in a specific region partners, uh, a general focus on internet adoption and improving that, and then making sure that this plan is updated with new strategies and information uh, as time goes on. Um, now, uh, these, as I said with the performance indicators, each one of those has a time frame associated with it. And so there is a goal for growth uh, in terms of hitting growth of these measures within certain times. Those are all listed out as well. Uh, and then with the um, uh, with these, we then can mix those in with the six outcome areas. And so, again, I do want to say I am a little bit 
defensive about uh, knowing that you all have have a lot of things on your plates. It's a busy time. You should not feel like you have to comment on every last piece of this document. But if you are working in healthcare and you are interested in a few covered populations, you can get what you need uh, in this report to understand what the strategies are and look at it, evaluate it without uh, having to spend a week working on it. So uh, there are a lot of opportunities to dig into this without having to be overwhelmed in any way. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the question then is what comes next, which I think is a is a key question uh, because it seems like everything's coming up on us very quickly. Um, comments are able to be submitted through January 5th next year. So we have a few weeks. Um, this is uh, something that this Texas um, um, Digital Opportunity Plan makes very easy to do. Uh, we have uh, that short video that um, if you haven't seen already, you will see soon. Again, I had a conflict. I'm a little bit late, uh, so I apologize for that. But it is very easy to submit a relevant comment. And so you can spend time being thoughtful without spending time clicking through a lot of boxes or things like that. Um, that those comments are going to help the state to develop its capacity grant program. Uh, so the program's not set. This, this plan is not set until uh, the office has reviewed your comments, but there will be a capacity grant program developed. We don't know what all of the rules around that are yet. Uh, those are still coming, um, but that is likely to be finished in the spring of 2024. This is uh, something that uh, all states are dealing with. The federal government hasn't made all of the information available at this point. Point. So uh, some of this is out of the state of Texas's hands. Um, but uh, we are expecting that the uh, digital opportunity plan will be approved in the spring of next year. The competitive grant program will be launched in the summer of next year. And then um, once that'll be a time for us to digest the rules. And then the grant applications will open in the fall of 2024. Um, and so that is when uh, there would be an opportunity to apply, uh, hopefully um, get some funds and then do great work uh, to get more people online and to work toward those five goals that the state has set out. Uh, would you like to advance the slide, please? I think we're, uh, we have uh, some frequently asked questions here and we're going into a break. Um, the uh, There's uh, some bullets here for you to review during this break, uh, but uh, if you have uh, questions, I believe we'll be handling them at the end. Uh, Deanne, are we just launching right into the break right now? Yes, we are. So we are going to keep this slide up, as Chris mentioned, and we will be back in 10 minutes. So please Thank come you. So please come back. Um, I'm going to actually cut it a little bit short. Please come back by 2.50. Yes, we'll not only have questions, but I will also be doing a, a small group activity, um, an opportunity for people to um, focus on rural and urban challenges. Thanks, Chris. We'll see you in eight minutes. And then we'll, and now we're gonna turn it over to Jordan, who's gonna bring us home. Can y'all guys hear me? Sorry, I had to miss with the mic. Right, thumbs up. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. I hope your breakout sessions were great. Uh, my name is Jordan Pittman. I am the digital. Jordan, just, uh, I think there might have been another couple of people who are just joining us right now. So oh, you might yeah. start in another five seconds. Yeah, absolutely. I'll come on rolling in. Again, I hope that everybody's discussion was well. The rural one was very well. I enjoyed that a lot. Hey. All right, I'm going uh, to go ahead and just keep it rolling as more people roll in. So again, my name is Jordan Pittman. I am the Digital Equity Coordinator for the Institute for Local Self-Reliance, along with Sean, Deanne, and Chris. And as mentioned, I just want to kind of finish off the presentation today, talking about kind of sort of the engagement with the TDOP, the present of, um, excuse me, the participation and the toolkit. So I want to dive a little bit into this, and this is actually kind of a sneak peek of next week's webinar, which we'll really dive deep into how your voice matters with public comment. But just as I've been mentioning kind of all day today with this presentation, that with public comment, this is a, first of all, just a once in an opportunity, once in a lifetime opportunity for Texans to be able to get these resources they need 
for everybody involved, but public comment specifically allows all Texans to be able to really dive in and to work on this draft, as Dan mentioned earlier, this isn't the final product. This draft will be able to have the access to help refine and improve upon the plan. So how does the Broadband Development Office use these comments? As it mentions here on the slide, it suggests changes that you'd like to see in the document. You can share where your organization can be helpful in implementation, provides additional information that the plans may not have captured, as well as correct the record if needed. So later on in the slide, quickly towards the end, I'm going to show a video on actually step by step on how to submit a public comment. But quickly, I just want to mention it again that the public comment is open for all Texans and the BDO is encouraging residents, local governments, community based organizations and others to provide that feedback. And specifically, they're really, excuse me, they're really looking forward for and really, really interested to hear from some of those underserved populations that we talked about older adults, veterans, uh, people living with disabilities, uh, English language learners. These are just some of the places here that you can see some of the eight um, covered populations that Deanne mentioned earlier. Um, and we'll dive in deep into that next week as well. But I just wanna go ahead for time's sake, go ahead and share the video that gives you a good breakdown on how to submit public comments. So I'm gonna pull it up right now. Can you guys see this? Later. Let me see if I can. Hey there, I'm Jordan Pittman, and welcome to today's guide. I'm This is where I like to make the joke that we are all on our own journey towards digital inclusion <laughs> and digital equity, and that all of us at all ages have digital skills that we're working on. Yes, absolutely. So what I am actually going to do, I don't know exactly what the day I'm going to close that and actually open it here. Yeah, while you're doing that, I'll just uh, say that embedding clips into things uh, is an invitation to ridicule. <laughs> because it's always going to make a fool of you. <laughs> so I'm uh, glad you're going to pull that up and uh, um, and do a, a share specifically of that video. It probably, is a band, it probably is a bandwidth issue. Jordan happens to be in, in Georgia where they, um, they're experiencing different issues of service. Absolutely. All right. I got it pulled up here. Y'all should be able to see it. Perfect. All right. We're going to get it planned. Hey there. I'm Jordan Pittman. And welcome to today's guide on submitting a public comment to the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan. In a world where connectivity is key, ensuring that every Texan has access is now more important than ever. Today, I'm going to walk you through the simple steps to make your voice heard in shaping the TDOP. So let's dive in. We will begin by going to Google and typing in the Texas Broadband Development Office, or BDO. And we'll click on this first link here. And when we're on the main page, we're going to scroll down to where it says what's new. And then right here, it'll say the Texas Digital Opportunity Plan Public Comment. You will click on this link, and it'll take you to this page that will offer you both access to look at the plan, the executive summary, as well as other information as well, including showing the plan right here to the right, which you can always check back to for reference. Filling out a public comment form is easy. On the left-hand side, you'll see that it will ask you just a couple questions. The first being, are you filling out this public comment form as a resident or organization? Do you identify or provide services to any of the follow-up covered populations? Select all that applies. Then you will Add your first, last name, and email. Then towards the end, it will ask you which chapter would you like to provide a comment on. So you will choose which chapter you would like to provide the comment on, and you will provide your comment in this text box here. There is an accessibility option 
to voice the text as well. And once that is completed, you can also provide any additional documents to support your claim by two clicking this choose file section here. Once you're completed with submitting your public claim, you'll click right here to submit. Or if you like to comment on another section, this black text box right here will allow you to click on another chapter to provide more public comment. And you can click on this for as many chapters as you would like to comment on. Once you're completed, again, you'll just click the click to submit. And that'll be it. You have completed and submitted a public comment. Just as a reminder, the public comment period ends on January 5th. That is the end of the video. And somebody put it in the chat as well, but we will share that video with you guys as well um, in order for y'all to have that and share that around as well. So I'm going to share my screen one more time so I can put the PowerPoint back up here. Here you go. So with public comment, as I mentioned, it's January 5th, but I just, again, want to emphasize that at the end of the day, I like Deanne said, you know, with my technical difficulties there, we're all still kind of learning and trying to dive into, you know, the importance of what all this means, how to navigate it, how to figure it out. And, you know, somebody mentioned it actually in our breakout room, in our rule breakout room, like, you know, there can be some fear for some people on, like, what does this mean and how to navigate this? And like, what does this mean for everybody involved? But the important thing of not only just this webinar, but for all of us connecting is that we all here trying to make a difference to give feedback to the TDOT so it can be the best document possible for everybody involved because we all want people to have access to good, affordable, high-speed internet. So I'm going to leave you guys with this along with the engagement and participation. The BDO office have actually also created a toolkit that actually contains materials and action items that you'll need to help you get the word out to people about submitting public comments. And some of those things that I include in there includes like tips for effective comments and skills, uh, even like samples of like things such as like press releases, invitation letters, social media posts. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can find that toolkit on the BDO website. And also we provided on here the links to both the draft of the TDOP as well as the NTIA funding program um, um, website. Thanks, Jordan. Can you expand your screen real quick for the last uh, Q and A yeah. slide? And I'll go uh, over it real quick. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Be uh, we're going to launch into the Q and A, but before you start jumping, I was going to ask you for a um, couple of things. When you are getting the emails that are coming out uh, to remind you about these events, uh, yeah. yes. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. The video ironically no, started. Uh, somebody said, hey, um, as you, just as a reminder, when you get the meeting recap uh, emails or you get the emails from us letting you know about the next upcoming event, I'm going to ask that you all share that with at least three people you know in your peer network or with people in your community that you think that you would like them to know about this information. And if you can, please today download the social media toolkit. And if you've got a comms person on your team or if you don't, we'd like for you all to consider using some of the templates um, I, um, that are in the toolkit and to be sharing out information about the plan for public engagement with your folks um, through the networks and the listservs that you have, regardless of how big or small your organization and three people at a neighborhood association can have a huge impact um, on, on the success of our community projects. Um, and also um, make sure to let people know um, where they can find the Texas Broadband Development Office and um, website if you're not sharing them through the slides internally with your network. So at this point, we're going to turn off the recording. Thank you again. Um, but we're going to leave the last few minutes for any comments that might be remaining. Thank you.